Hello, this is Julia Whitup with Talk Story Media, and we have with us today Christy Monson, and she has written a book. I know that the article you wrote for us is called How to Recover it's from the Death Loss of or Death of a Loved One. That yes, that was an article that I wrote. This one, my book is called Finding Peace in Times of Tragedy. I think that one is really a needed thing. There's a lot going on these days and it's uh, people are having a hard time coping with it all. That is so true. And it's tragic that our world has gotten to that point, but it is so true because you find things in the news just every, every few days of, of horrific tragedies that happen besides the hurricanes and the tsunamis and floods and those kinds of things. So people are dealing with a lot these days. I used to be a therapist and one of the things I would tell people who are depressed is just do not watch the news at all. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> or, or read the papers because they concentrate on tragedies. They do. And the other thing that the book hits on besides those global things that are happening. We all have problems in our own lives and, and tragedies, whether they're the death of a loved one or, or all kinds of tragedies happen to us personally. So, you know, we all have got quite a bit that we have to deal with and it's, it's good to have a, a plan to help you get through whatever happens. Yeah. And know that you, where to go, you know, oh, I read this article, where do, you know, I have that here somewhere. <laughs> Did, uh, how long have you been in this business, Christy? Well, I, I practiced in Las Vegas for quite a few years. And then after I, my husband retired, so I retired also. And, and then I've written several books. I, I, the first one I wrote was Becoming Free, A Woman's Guide to Internal Strength. And then I wrote one on family talk, how to hold family councils. And then um, I did one for children called Love, Hugs, and Hope when scary things happen. You just couldn't retire, could you? <laughs> I, I, oh, that's so true. I always <laughs> in some little thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that way too. I'm supposedly retired, but I can't do it. I've got to have stuff to do. Well, you do. And the, and the thing that I have found is it, it's so fulfilling to be able to to change your not only your own life but other people's lives through what you do and i i love that yeah me too that's why i'm doing what i'm doing <laughs> well tell us just uh, briefly what are some things you can do right at the time when the tragedy happens like i saw a car wreck not too long ago and i wasn't involved in it or anything but i just saw it and I noticed for about a month, I was having intense startle reactions and symptoms of PTSD. You know, that happens to all of us, I think. Um, maybe I'll just go back and recount the last thing that happened to me. My husband passed away about a year ago and we'd been married for 54 years. And so, and that was a shock to me. I had a really, and I've been a therapist and I've helped people through the grief process and the tragedy process, but. I was in shock. It was really hard for me to function for a few days. And I had really to, to do my meditation and stay grounded in the present. And of course, my kids were here to kind of help with that. But it is a difficult process to get through. And a lot of times we fall into to anxiety and depression. And, and so I, for me, my meditation, my daily meditation and my deep breathing exercises. And then I have, I have a quick pickup that is for the short term. And if you smile, smiling kind of gets you through a lot of things. And so then I, I'm just able to pull myself through a little bit. But I have a, a technique that I, I discovered with my clients. Well, I really discovered it years ago when I was a child. But I, uh, through guided imagery, you can find a wise mentor my father was killed when I was a, a young child and he always read me stories before I went to bed. So after he was gone, I would lay in bed every night and I would 
pretend his arms were around me, visualize his arms around me and, mm -hmm. and feel the closeness of him there. And we, then I would read the books, the books that we read together. And that, that creative imagery is what I call it. It was so helpful for me and healing. And I have done, I did that with my clients and it was really helpful for them to work through things. And I think many times people do use that creative imagery and what they do. I, I listened to a, I don't know where I was going the other day, but I listened to a, an interview, an old one with Hillary Clinton, where she, she had Eleanor Roosevelt as a, as a mentor for her. She loved Eleanor Roosevelt. She was an idol to her. So she, Hillary says, you know, sometimes I just sit quietly and I talk to Eleanor in my head and then I tell her all my problems and she and I work it out together. And I thought, <laughs> you know, that is, that is a ex perfect example of this creative imagery because I think we've all got someone that we love, a, a father, or, um, a grandparent, or a, a wise counselor that we can use to help us work through things. And in doing that, we tap into the wisdom that is inside of us because we all have the capacity to heal. It's the, the, the mind and body is amazing to me. I just was in awe of my clients that were able to tap into that internal wisdom and find, find their healing from within. Yeah, that, that sounds really useful. One that I use is to put the scene, whatever scene it is, if it's disturbing to me, and between it and I put a screen of roses. Oh, that's a wonderful technique. It's beautiful and it, for some reason, it calms me down. Yeah. Well, flowers are, are beautiful and, and if you visualize the flowers and, and the softness of their petals and the scent of the, flower that can really put you into the scene and and that is a very powerful uh technique in fact when you do the guided imagery i love to to create to create all the senses or find all the senses inside that's that's a that's a beautiful technique i love that yeah well maybe you could give a little workshop sometime for my uh readers that'd be nice i would love to do that that would be great Okay, we could do some kind of like guided imagery and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that'd be nice. Well, and, and it, it's amazing what people come up with because I, I don't like to guide anyone's, well, I have to guide it, someone's imagery, but they have to come up with, the, with their own mantras and their own, their own visualization. And so some of my um, severe abuse survivors, one of them, created a hospital, an internal hospital where she, because uh, she was severely abused as a child and there were just angel, angel nurses there to care for oh. her and mentor her and love her. And I thought, what a creative thing for her to do. And it helped her heal. Um, it was, it was a powerful image. Of course, then I had another one who, who she had so many safety issues that her, her safe place was in the in a bunker in the middle of the Sahara <laughs> Desert. <laughs> bunker. Okay, well, that works. <laughs> yeah, so I think, well, you know, whatever works for you is absolutely good. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, <clears throat> a year's not a long time. I hope that things are getting easier as it goes on. Yes, it has. It has been easier as time has gone along. And I've written several articles about about grieving loss, and that has been helpful for me. But it, you know, there's just a loneliness there. And and when you say to people, "Oh, well, you're gonna, we're gonna fix this. You're gonna get beyond it." You know, I don't think we ever completely heal from a tragedy, but we are able. We've gained the wisdom that we've gained from it outweighs the the hard things that we've been through and we are wiser and 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 better for what we've been through although for me the loneliness is still there at times i you know yeah now that we're getting older i think about that too what if something happened to my husband 
it's it's a it's an adjustment it's a very it's a real adjustment and and again i use the guided imagery and the creative visualization with him sometimes for when i'm dealing with the taxes or i don't know whether to replace the roof or not all those little things that <laughs> that he you know, used you to do <laughs> decisions yourself I can I can sit and talk with him, and the two of us can decide it together. Still, so, so it's a it's a powerful thing to have with you, um, in all that you do. Well, I really appreciate your being on the show, and um, let's talk more. Maybe you can give a little workshop for my uh, listeners and readers, and. Um, I would love to do that. Um, just one more thing that I'll mention that the book has. I, I decided I would contact people that had been through tragedy uh, and see how they work through it because a lot of everybody handles trauma differently. Mm -hmm. So I have, I have the stories of a, of a lady who survived 9-11 and that mm -hmm. is a powerful story, right? It's the first story in the book, obviously, because that was a, and so she got away. She got. She was in the second tower when the first tower went down, and she saw those people in the plane just before it crashed. And anyway, she got. She got away. And then I have a story of a of a mother and father who had two young daughters that had identical brain tumors. One died six or seven years before the other one, and they had a brain tumor that formed on the optic nerve. It was, and it was horrific to listen to the way they healed from their <coughs> trauma and how they peace inside themselves. And, and I have a mom whose son's leg was blown off in a roadside bomb in Afghanistan and a, a young man whose father committed suicide. In a, in a and where survivor. could someone get your book? Uh, the book is on Amazon. It's called Finding Peace in Times of Tragedy. And the other thing that, if you're okay, if I if I just mention this, um, I have partnered with the Trauma Survivor Foundation, uh, and he Dennis has got the book up there on his website. So if you go to the Trauma Survivor Foundation <clears throat> and buy the book there, then then the then the proceeds um, from the book go to his Trauma Foundation, which I think is a is a worthy cause. That's so. wonderful. That's that's very nice of you to do that. So the traumafoundation.com. It's the trauma survivors. Survivors. Trauma, trauma trauma survivors foundation. Foundation.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. and do you have a website? I do have a website and um, it's christymonson.com. Okay. C H R I S T Y M O N S O N.com. Okay. Thank and you. Those links, are, well, um, those links are there. Okay. So people, so. And they're in the article, which is in our newsletter. So. Um, well, thank you, Julia, so much. It's a pleasure to visit with you. Thank you for being on the show. I'll talk to you soon. Alrighty.